Let me start by saying this. A business plan is not getting a record deal or a publishing deal. That's not your business plan. But that's the plan of most of the people that I talk to in this town, which is so interesting. Why are you here? I'm here to get a record deal. Really? <laughs> Have you done the math? <laughs> we got four major labels. You know, Big Machine, I think it's 30 something people combined on all their rosters, possibly 40 Warner Brothers the same. There's about 70 people in here. I saw about 30 people raise their hands. Well, I'll just get a publishing deal first. I hear that a lot too. Great, let me know how that works out for you. You are your own first publisher. You are your own first real record company. You are your own first banker because your publishing company is also your banker. They lend you money. They want to get money back, just like he said, record company. They're gonna do everything they can to get the money back right now because the game isn't the way that it used to be. Do I have permission to be 100% honest and not sit up here and kiss anybody's ass for the next yes. however long I'm up here? Yes. We're good like that? Yes. Okay, if you have complaints, send them to Dope Turner. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You can follow me on socials at Rick Barker Music. I follow everyone back, and I'll usually respond unless you send me something and say, hey, will you listen to my music? Because then I usually say, why? I'm not a songwriter, and I'm not looking for music. The better question you could ask me sometimes is, hey, would you take a look at my website and tell me if I'm doing things right? Because right now, the biggest problem I find in Nashville is there's too many dreamers and not enough doers. That's the reality of it. Everybody comes here with a dream that they're going to be discovered. We discover cures for diseases and planets. We don't discover people. Okay? You want to be discovered, get, get other people talking about you. That's what we discover. Hey, you've got to see this band. They're awesome on stage. That's kind of the band I'm going to maybe sway over to. Or you got to see these people. They put out this video and it's just getting amazing results right now. That's the thing that I'm going to go see. A lot of people, unfortunately, when I sit down with them in my office, and I meet with artists all the time, is I say, what's your goal? And they say, to play arenas. Have <laughs> I ever heard that or maybe said it? You don't have to raise your hand. Their goal is to play arenas. And I say, what's that going to take? And they're like, hit songs. I'm like, no, people. <laughs> <laughs> we want... <laughs> If you have a whole bunch of music and nobody to hear it, you're in the inventory business. You're not in the music business. Too many times you're writing music that makes you feel good. Why don't you go get in a conversation with somebody else and find out what's going to make them feel good? If they cry, they buy. I've witnessed that. Your job as an artist is to connect with me emotionally. Make me laugh, make me cry, make me think. Make me get out of whatever it is that I was feeling that day. When I left the office and I felt like shit and I heard your song and it got a hold of me, carry on a conversation with me now. Like Peter said, there are no gatekeepers. You can go in and compliment people online all the time. But instead, most artists are like, vote for me, do for me, buy for me, 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 me. Screw you. We have friends in our lives we don't like that come at us like that all the time. <laughs> but that, but hey, you just met me. I wrote this cool song. Go to iTunes, buy it. We're not there in our relationship yet. Don't be afraid to date. Don't be afraid to get to know someone first. I was writing a proposal tomorrow that I'm presenting to someone. And there's two parts of it. One says, what's in it for you? What's in it for me? Most people will put what I need from you is more what I need from you, what you need from me. I put the what you need from me, what you get from me first. Because that kind of lowers them down a little bit. Same thing with these people online. You know, that's a great place for you to build relationships. I just got good at social media. You know, when Taylor and I first started together, there was only MySpace. We all had friends. Tom was our very first friend, all of you. Anybody who's ever on MySpace, Tom was your first friend. <laughs> but then what happened is that the record companies found out about it and said, we'll go market to these people. All of us want to buy, we just don't want to be sold to. And we need to get to that stage in our relationship. And sometimes that relationship is too quick. So I know what I know. I want to know what you want to know. And I want to answer those questions because a gentleman asked earlier, what happens if a manager says they need $10,000? Managers don't make money until you make money. 
I'm an advisor. I charge you up front because I do all the work up front. I'm just like Belmont, except I teach reality. <laughs> That's kind of the biggest difference. It's, and I'm not putting that down. I'm just stating. <laughs> it's like, they're going to teach you the people you need to go network with, but they're not going to teach you human behavior and psychology skills to go do that. So when you're walking around town with a pack full of CDs and everybody you meet that's in the industry and you're handing them your CDs and you're giving them your card and the first time you see them play around, you go up and we should co-write together. And the guy's like, okay. And they'll take your disc out of being courteous. CD players, I mean the computers don't even have CD players anymore. They're not gonna sit in their car and go, holy shit, I cannot wait to get in the car to hear this disc and this person that just came up so rudely while I was in the middle of a conversation with somebody else and dumped their CD on me. But that's what we do, because people say, have CDs, have business cards. Why don't you go up to them, or why don't you search them? Like the gentleman who asked Savannah what her handle was, he can now go to her, look at all her photos, because she was cute, so he'll look at all her photos first, because that's what guys do. But he could go into her and say, you know what, I really enjoyed your song. Stop there on this first date. Just tell her you enjoyed her song. If she's good, she's going to reach out and go, man, that's awesome. I hope we had a chance to connect. By the way, what, what do you do? Why were you at this event? I'm a songwriter. Wow, now it's her idea. I'd love to hear some of your stuff. Is there a link that I can hear some of your stuff? That's where the problem's going to start, because most of you don't have a link where we can go hear your stuff. You're walking around with all these CDs in your pocket. <laughs> when all you need to do, you only want to send people to one place, really. It's your website. And the reason for that is because that's the only thing you own. You don't own Facebook. You don't own Twitter. You don't own YouTube. You don't own Reverb Nation or Bandcamp. So first things first, no matter what part of the business you're in, you need to have your own real estate. You have to have a place to send someone. You want to be on the stage, mine's rickbarker.com. Made it kind of easy. Guy put a value on me, says I'm going to charge you $5,000 for that. I'm like, bullshit, my dad's the only other Rick Barker and some guy who's an architect in Australia. I'll give you 500 bucks. He said, okay, I'll take it. So, <laughs> learn negotiating skills too. They'll come in handy with the things that we do. But what I want to do is, you can go to my website, grab a free copy of my book, you can go grab a video series called The Free Keys to Success. And then there's a whole bunch of other stuff on there. You're going to start getting emails from me. And I'm going to kind of lead you down a journey. And at some point, I'm going to give you so much knowledge that I'm going to ask you for money. Just know what's coming. I'm telling you right now. I'm going to, for $97, I'm going to offer you everything I know about social media up to this point. Kind of a value, maybe. Maybe not. But there's people in here that have spent a lot more with me than $97. And they're a little farther along than probably the majority of you in this room. Why? Because they bought coaching. They bought my knowledge and they bought my experience. Everything I know about technology, you can learn online. Go to Google, type in how to, and then usually some 10-year-old kid from England <laughs> will show up on a video and teach you how to do it. But what you want to do is you want to associate your, with people that you can get their knowledge and their experience because they can help you bypass the bullshit. They can help you speed up things. I work with a trainer because on my own, I stop. When it starts hurting, I stop. I'm fat. I keep appointments. If I'm left at my own strength, I stop when it hurts and I make an excuse not to go to the gym. So Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, don't try to bother me from 1.30 to 2.30, I'm at Next Level Fitness. But I had to do that because I, own, I know my own strengths and weaknesses. Some of you need to do a self-assessment on yourself. Some of you can have the best moving around the stage, great moments, but if you're pitchy, get with a vocal coach. If you're not good at guitar, get with a guitar instructor. If you don't know how to take this great music you're making and put it out to the world, work with somebody who understands social media. But instead, you'll spend $1,000 on a guitar, but I have a program that can help you do everything for 250 bucks that are like, Rick, come on. Come on, Rick, let me take you to lunch and pick your brain. I can buy my own sandwich. You know? Yeah. You can't go to your attorney and say, can we go to lunch and talk for an hour about legal stuff? He's going to say, sure, 500 bucks. That's kind of the way that it happens. So what I want you guys to think of is this. There's a lot of great material that's out there. Free can only take you so far. And I'm not here to try to sell you anything because I, I make my money whether you buy anything from me or not.
because I have people that believe in what it is that I do because I consistently show up in their lives and make a difference. But there's a lot of free stuff out there. There's a whole bunch of YouTube videos. So I tell people, you can pick my brain on my YouTube channel. Everything that was in there got dumped out on video, usually while I was driving. And I just let it out. 25 Minutes in Nashville was what it was called. That's when I live in Nolansville. They've added more people, haven't widened roads. Now it's 45 Minutes in Nashville, and my whole branding sucks right now because I have to change everything at this point.